Okay, so now Dr. Sazgar Kamal will continue the <coughs> talk about the uh, lung uh, or thoracic radiology with her presentation on approach to multiple lung nodules. Good morning, everyone. Today I will talk about approach to multiple nodules based on the pattern of distribution and uh, pulmonary cyst and cavitary uh, cavitary and cystic lung disease. Also, a few points about the uh, fib fibrotic changes and uh, uh, and pulmonary infection. Starting with the uh, with the uh, multiple pulmonary, mm, pulmonary nodules based on the pattern of distribution can be classified into centrilobular nodules, perilymphatic nodules, and uh, randomly distributed nodules with the uh, uh, three but uh, pattern. Centrilobular nodules. Centrilobular nodules represent opacification of the centrilobular bronchial, or less commonly, the centrilobular artery at the center of each sen secondary pulmonary lobule. On CT scan, multiple small nodules are seen in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobules and uh, never extend to the pulmonary surface. The nodules may be solid or of ground attenuation and uh, range in size from tiny up to centimeter. Uh, this pattern of distribution can be frequently found in hypersensitive pneumonitis, respiratory bronchiolitis in smoker, infectious airway disease like endobronchial uh, spread of tuberculosis and non-tuberculosis mycobacteria, bronchopneumonia, and common in bronchoalveolar carcinoma, pulmonary edema, edema, edema and vasculitis. Here we can see multiple uh, interlobular septi and multiple nodules within within the lobules. Uh, none of the nodule uh, extend to the pleural surface, which is typical uh, of the centrilobular distribution. And uh, on this uh, image, we can see multiple ill-defined uh, ill-defined centrilobular of uh, ground uh, glass opac opacity seen. Axial CT demonstrate multiple, in, uh, multiple innumerable uh, subcentimeter centrilobular nodule of ground glass attenuation. None of the nodules extend to the to uh, to the polar surface, which is typical of centrilobular distribution. This was a case of respiratory bronchiolitis. The second pattern: perilymphatic nodules. Nodules are seen in relation to the polar surface interlobular septa and uh, bronchovascular uh, interstitia. Nodules are more almost always visible in subpleural location, particularly in relation to the fissures. Yeah, if it reaches the pleural surface, it's, it's perilymphatic. perilymphatic. If it's not, it's centrilobular. centrilobular. The differential diagnosis of the perilymphatic nodules includes sarcoidosis, most common cause of perilymphatic nodules, typically with upper lobe distribution, the nodules may become confluent, creating the galaxy sign. Pneumoconiosis, like slicosis and Paul Walker's pneumoconiosis, imaging may uh, like identical to the sarcoidosis, but usually there is a history of exposure. And lymphatic uh, ca lymphangitic carcinomatosis. There is a multiple uh, uh, nodules within the interlobular septi, within the fissure and the uh, bronco vascular bundle. Also on this image you can see multiple small nodules within the fissure and uh, within the bronco uh, vascular bundles. Here, here also can see the uh, multiple nodules within the fissure and uh, within the bronco uh, vascular bundles and uh, there is a bulging or uh, enlarged lymph nodes this was a case of uh, typical case of sarcoidosis. Axial CT uh, demonstrate multiple subpleural and bronchovascular bundles here. So reaching the pleura. It's reaching the pleura. The pleura. It is something yes. related to the nephrotis. Yes. In this case, it's subpleural. 
randomly distributed nodule is a result of hematogenous spread of infection. Small random nodules are seen in hematogenous metastasis, miliary tuberculosis, miliary fungal infectious sarcoidosis, and Langerhans cell histocytosis. There is a multiple <coughs> small nodules distributed ran randomly throughout the lung. Uh, axial CT demonstrate multiple random nodules, some of the nodules reaching the blue abut or uh, pl to the pleural surface. This case uh, uh, was a case of metastatic colonic carcinoma. Keep in mind, whenever you see this appearance of a small vessel leading to the nodule, you can see vessel leading to the nodule, vessel leading to the nodule, vessel leading to a nodule. Vessel. This is very suggestive of metastasis. This is also multiple uh, small uh, nodules distributed randomly throughout both, lung, both lungs. Three in bed nodules representative of uh, centrilobular pattern. This corresponds to the dilatation of the centrilobular bronchioles with a pathological content, most commonly occurs in small airway infections and infectious bronchiolitis. The differentials of three in bed nodules include mycobacterial uh, tuberculosis and atypical mycobacteria, bacterial pneumonia, aspiration pneumonia, airway invasive aspergillus. There is <coughs> dilated impact centrilobular uh, bronchioles. Uh, axial CT shows numerous numerous nodules budding of the, of the linear uh, branching structure in the right middle lobe. This, uh, this case was secondary atypical mycobacteria. Also, this is an example of a tree in bed pattern. Uh, Axial CT shows innumerable tiny nodules described randomly throughout both lung lungs in a miliary pattern. This case uh, of uh, miliary tuberculosis. Cavitary lung disease. Cavitary lesion has irregular thick wall usually with uh, solid uh, mural content. Uh, the wall thickness of the cavity, if the wall thickness of the cavitary lesion more equal or less than four uh, millim, it's usually benign. If more than 15 and uh, speculated, suggesting malignancy. You have a solitary cavitary lesion is most likely to, due to car car cancer or infection like primary bronchogenic carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and adenocarcinoma uh, can cavitate, make a, can cavitate, but uh, squamous uh, cell carcinoma more frequently cavitate, squamous cavitate, cav cavitate than adenocarcinoma, but small cell carcinoma never cavitate. Tuberculosis uh, produce upper lobe uh, cavitation. Axial CT shows single speculated cavitary lesion in the left upper lobe. This was a case of squamous cell carcinoma. You can see the walls thick. Yes. With speculation, center of cavitation, most likely a case of, most likely to be squamous cell. Yes. Multiple cavitary nodule uh, lesions are typically vascular or spread through the vascular system. Septic emboli vasculites include migrant granulomatosis, which is especially prone to cavitate. Metastasis of, as we said, squamous cell carcinoma and uh, uterine carcinosarcoma are known to cavitate. Axial CT shows numerous cavitary and uh, non cavitary um, lesions bilaterally in a randomly distribution. This was a case of uh, tricuspid endocarditis and uh, septic emboli. Cystic lung disease, uh, usually due to uh, airway uh, abnormal, uh, abnormality, 
the differential diagnosis of multiple lung cysts include lymphangiomyelomatosis, emphysema, Langer, multiple monary, Langerhans cell histocytosis, diffuse cystic bronchiectasis, pneumocystic gibberty, pneumonia, lymphoid interstitial pneumonia. Axial CT shows bilateral thin walled cysts that are varying of varying size but uh, regular in shape. There is a small left pleural effusion. This was a case of lymphangiomyomatosis. The differential diagnosis for a single cyst include bullae, uh, blep, and nematocyl. <coughs> fibrotic changes. The differential diagnosis of basal fibrotic, uh, predominant fibrotic changes include idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is clinical syndrome of progressive pulmonary fibrosis of unknown etiology. It is the most common cause of basal fibrosis. It's almost always features of basilar base, honeycombing and the stage as asbestosis produce uh, pleural plaque and a specific interstitial pneumonia. Axial CT shows basilar uh, fibrosis and honeycomb uh, with relative sparing of the upper lobes. There was a case of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So more apico basal Increases in severity from the apex to the base. The apex is much less, much and less. the base is this much more worse. Yes. Upper lobe fibrotic changes. The also idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is the most common cause of pulmonary fibrosis. Fibrosis primarily affecting the upper lobes should raise concern for an alter alternative diagnosis, such as end stage sarcoidosis, uh, coronary hypersensitivity oh. pneumonitis, and end stage silicosis. Uh, coronal CT shows upper lobe predominant subpleural fibrosis and uh, traction prophylactasis. A pathological diagnosis was not established in this case. Radiological pattern of the infection. Lober pneumonia. Lober pneumonia is a consolidation of the single lobe. It's usually bacterial in origin. Is the most common presentation of community acquired pneumonia. The larger bronchi remain patent, causing air bronchogram. Bronchopneumonia is a patchy consolidation with poorly defined airspace opacity, usually involving several lobes, most commonly due to Staphylococcus aureus. Coronal lymphomatic CT image shows homogeneous focal area of consolidation in the right upper uh, lobe. Uh, air bronchogram seen within the area of consolidation. No signs of volume loss. Yes. So there is no collapse, no injury. It's just, yes. consolidation. just uh, Interstitial pneumonia. It can be caused by viral pneumonia, mycoplasma, chlamydia, or pneumocystis. Uh, <coughs> coronal reformatic CT shows multiple ill defined round areas of consolidation in the left upper. Uh, lobe with visible air, air bronchogram uh, and poorly marg uh, defined margins. So this, this case was chlamydia pneumonia. One of the differentials is uh, pneumocystis virulency yes. or pneumocystis carrying. carrying yes. So we should ask the patient to do what? Uh, A child. Yes. yes. Pneumocystis carrying or virulency, it's one of the AIDS defining yes. problems. Round pneumonia is only in children, most commonly due to streptococcus pneumonia. Uh, chest radiograph shows uh, a mass-like area of consolidation in the left upper lobe. They show so the only in children, 264 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Complication of pneumonia, pulmonary abscess, empyema, pulmonary gangrene, bronchopleural fistula, empyema, resistance, and pneumatocyl. 
pulmonary abscess an air fluid uh, levels is almost always present uh, an abscess is usually spherical the uh, with equal dimensions on frontal and uh, lateral views there on uh, this uh, chest x-ray uh, pa view and uh, lateral we see the thick walled uh, cavitary lesion with air fluid level and uh, with equal dimension on the frontal and lateral views empyema an empyema uh, conforms to the shape of the uh, pleural surf, uh, space causing a longer air fluid level uh, on the lateral radiograph in contrast to the uh, abscess it's uh, longer air fluid uh, on the lateral uh, radiograph contrast nefs dimension, dimension but while in pyma longer dimension on lateral yes and you can see the wall enhancement wall enhancement which inflammation eh. due to abscess yes. due to yani pus pus ct uh, uh, shows uh, enhancement of thick visceral and parietal pleural layer which in case uh, pleural uh, fluid collection collection and uh, this sign called split pleural sign um, ct shows uh, this, uh, an example of the pneumatocin thin uh, wallet uh, cystic lesion in the right uh, lower lobe uh, thank you thank you very much very nice concise focused presentation uh, it is uh, very nice report i like it a lot any questions